Thanks a lot, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm a venture capitalist and uh, I've invested for many, many years and I never expected to find entrepreneurs in one of the most unlikely places you'd expect in the world. I'm also not necessarily qualified initially to run a prison program, but that seems to have, have been effective over the last five years. Um, what really happened, I'll give you a, a brief story of, of how I got involved in this and, and how this has really sort of transcended what our original idea was. Um, I was invited into San Quentin about five years ago to do a talk for about 70 guys about entrepreneurship. And I walked into that room for, to do about a 30 minute presentation, not knowing if anything that I would say would resonate with them. That 30 minute conversation turned into about a two and a half hour conversation. The guys were asking me questions that I was shocked that they knew uh, about valuations and, and technology and things like that. Guys had business plans and they had this thirst for knowledge that had been brewing for many years and never had anybody to talk to. And finally, a guy walks in prison that's, that's actually speaking some of the language that they've been studying. And that really triggered something in me saying, what we do with entrepreneurs out here on the outside is not dissimilar but what we can do inside. It takes passion and presence and, 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 uh, and desire to be successful. These guys were showing that same desire. So we put together a program and, and started with an entrepreneurship program, developed it as a six-month curriculum where we taught many of the guys had been in, in, uh, in San Quentin and in prison for 10, 15, 20 years. So we had to teach them how the world has changed. They don't have connectivity, but they can see TV, they can subscribe to newspaper and magazines. And we brought in a lot of guest speakers to, to teach them that. Then the second part was we wanted to them to find a passion project, something we're really passionate about, and build a business plan around that. That business plan had to have a technology component and a social cause. And the third part of our curriculum was teaching them how to articulate that message in front of a live audience. I mean, you, you guys have done demo day and it's pretty daunting. Can you imagine doing a demo day in front of a crowd that you saw about 400 people, news media there, guys had never presented in front of an audience before. And uh, we had our last demo day, April 20th. Many of my vent venture capital friends came in and, and they said these were some of the best presentations they had ever seen. So along the theme of open innovation and finding innovation in, in many unlikely places, this is a great example of that. Um, we now have 10 graduates that have come out of the program. There's 37 graduates that are still inside uh, and many of them are working their way toward freedom as we speak. The new program we launched in October and had a, a graduation in April 4 was the first coding curriculum in a U.S. prison. Um, we teach uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but we had to teach it with an unconnected environment. So we had to create a, uh, a curriculum that simulated a live experience that we could teach coding. It took us a while to do that. We partnered with Hack Reactor here in the city. Um, so now we have the first cohort that's graduated out of uh, a coding class. We're now expanding to several prisons in California. We just got a grant by the California Department of Corrections to expand, so they are now our partner. Uh, we've sort of proven ourselves that we can do this. Uh, and I was in New York a couple weeks ago met, and met with uh, Governor Cuomo's office, and we're gonna expand there in New York uh, next fall. So what really, uh, again, what was something of a curiosity, a, a sort of serendipitous moment for me, turned to, to a social cause that has become sort of my life's work. My wife, Beverly, is a co-founder, uh, and she is now the executive director of, of the Last Mile program. And uh, it's, it's something that is really extraordinary. Uh, when we place guys in, in internships here in San Francisco, at first I thought, you know, I, I approached companies that I knew within our portfolio saying, would you just do this as a favor and, and take a chance on this? And uh, some reluctantly agreed. What's happened is every guy we place has just been phenomenal. Their attitudes, their work ethic, their desire is just incredible. And so that positive message and enthusiasm has sort of transcended the, the company into the, into the community. So I can tell you a lot about it, but really, really what I wanted to do was introduce someone who lived the journey. He was featured in this, Kenyatta Leal. Um, he was in our founding class, and um, 
The challenge for us, not ever been in a prison before and not having any orientation was, how do we actually find a group that we start this, this uh, curriculum not really knowing whether it would work or not? And uh, so we started with seven guys. Kenyatta was uh, one of those. And uh, he was actually, we sort of built a program around him because when I went to prison administration and asked them, you know, who are a few guys that we could actually build this around? And the name came up constantly was Kenyatta, Kenyatta, Kenyatta. So I had to meet this guy, you know? And when I met Kenyatta, he was one of the most enthusiastic, positive people I'd ever met. And he was serving a life sentence. Under Prop 36, he was uh, serving a life sentence for doing, having uh, committed a nonviolent third strike. So he had served 17 years when I, when I met him, and he really had no uh, visibility toward release. But yet he was this positive. And that positiveness has really um, been a beacon of hope for many guys now. Uh, you saw um, that little clip at the end was Kenyatta literally walking out the gate after 19 years. And uh, he's been now a free man for almost two years. Um, the interesting story is that at Demo Day, Ken, um, Duncan Logan, who is the CEO of Rocket Space, saw Kenyatta. He had met him previously before briefly. And after his presentation, he offered him a job while he still had a life sentence. So Kenyatta had the unique uh, situation where he's serving a life sentence and he had a job. Um, <laughs> but fortunately, he was uh, released a year later. I think it was three weeks after that, he started working at Rocket Space as an intern. He's now the manager of Cap'n Services. We have graduates now that work for him. Uh, and he's done an extraordinary job. So uh, I'd love to introduce uh, Kenyatta and have him come up and talk to you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so from the big house to galvanize, who would have thunk that? I always think to myself, you know, what would the guys in North Block say now if they could see me now, you know? And uh, I think that my life is just one example of many, that anything is possible if you believe. You work hard and you have a positive attitude and you surround yourself with the right people, then anything is possible. And I'm living proof of that. You know, I, people, you know, they come to me all the time, well, can y'all know you're an exception? Well, guess what? I wasn't an exception 20 years ago when I was sitting in the courtroom and the judge was slamming down that gavel giving me 25 life sentence. You know, so that really doesn't fly with me. I really believe that, you know, that if people, you know, just tap into that, that thing that we all have, I think every single one of us in here has made a bad choice. Yeah, show of hands, who's made a bad choice in here? Right, but you're able to bounce back from that, and I think that that's the difference between a successful person and the not so successful person, is that the people who make you know, bad choices, they learn from that and they move forward, and they don't try not to make that mistake again. And I think that that's really what the last mile is all about, is helping us tap into that and, so that we can operate from that position all the time. There's so many people inside incarcerated settings, not just at San Quentin, but throughout America, who have this entrepreneurial spirit. They just used it in the wrong way. <laughs> Seriously, I'm one of those people, that's how I know that. I mean, I hustled in the street, I, I did all kinds of, you know, I sold weed and you know, did all kinds of little things in the street and that led me to prison. You know, and um, when I was inside, I, I'd gotten a life sentence. At 25 years old, I was sentenced to 25 to life in prison. And in California, 25 to life means 25 to life. And, you know, when I was there, probably for about the five, first five or six years, I went through this process where I was, you know, trying to overcome this denial that I was in. It was everybody else's fault. It was the judge, it was the DA, it was my homeboy who snitched on me, it was all these other factors, you know. But ultimately, I came to this realization that I was the problem. It was the choices that I made that led me to prison. But with that realization, I also came to understand that if I'm the problem, I'm also the solution. And if I start making better choices, then I can get a different outcome out of life. And so when I was at San Quentin, and I immersed myself in a number of programs there, I went back to school, um, got my degree. Uh, I went through a number of different programs on the inside that helped me understand my role in the community and what I could do to add value in my community. And at the time, my community was San Quentin. And so I became a mentor and a tutor, you know, and an advisor to other men who were you know, and their process of change as well. 
And it was in that process that, that I was introduced to Chris and Beverly and um, the idea of the last mile. And when they came to me and, and, and spoke to me and you know, presented this idea about a technology accelerator inside a prison, I was like, are you kidding me? I'm all in. When do we start? You know? And so um, you know, we worked really, really hard to develop the curriculum and um, get a number of guys in that could help support the program and get it off the ground inside. And what's happened is just phenomenal. The last mile is literally changing the culture inside of San Quentin. I mean, really, really fostering this idea of hope and that change is possible, excuse me. And I went back there. I've been fortunate enough to go back to San Quentin twice. And every time I go back, I see guys that, that I had walked the yard with, that I had you know, gone through ups and downs with. And they see me and they're like, wow, Kenyatta, how did you do it? I said, you guys seen how I did it, you know? It's not hard. Just shift what you, the way that you're thinking, you know? You keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to keep on getting what you're getting. My grandmother used to tell me when I was a little kid, you plant peas, what are you going to get? Peas. You plant corn, what are you going to get? Right. If you keep doing negative things, that's all you're ever going to get in life. You start doing positive things and surround yourself with positive people, and good things are going to happen, even in prison. And that's my message to the guys then. That's really my message for you, to, for you guys here today, is that, you know, anything is possible. I know in the startup community, everybody's trying to, you know, build this minimum viable product and get it to market and, you know, get funding and do all these great things. Well, guys on the inside are trying to do the same thing. They're trying to iterate. They're trying to change their lives and do something different. And uh, with your support, you know, this, uh, this is all possible. I know there's many of you who may be CEOs or work with companies um, here in the Valley or here in San Francisco, and you have an opportunity to, you know, to give somebody a chance with an internship. You could help change the trajectory of an individual life, help change a family, and in turn help change the community with your help. So I just want to thank you guys for having me today, and um, God bless you all.